With a market so hotly contested, how does a Chinese brand known for budget devices attack the high-end game? By being the thinnest, by having beefy on-paper specs, and by trying to appeal as a budget iPhone. So how well does this play out? It isn't hard to see that the Ascend P6 is closely related to the iPhone 4. In fact, if not for the rounded plastic at the bottom edge, you could argue that Huawei chose the iterative design step Apple opted against when moving from the iPhone 4 to 5. But that isn't to say that the design is less impressive. At 6.2mm thick, it's super thin. So thin, in fact, it's rather alluring. The brushed aluminium sides and crisp textural differences of the edges and buttons make it feel high-end to boot. The top of the front Gorilla Glass pane holds the speaker centrally, with the ambient light proximity sensor and notification light left, and the front facing 5 megapixel camera right. The bottom has no physical or capacitive buttons and leads into the rounded base holding the microphone. Awkwardly, the left hand side of the phone has one input encased in the rounding, and that is the audio jack port. If not using the supplied headset with the right angle jack, any other headphones protrude annoyingly off to the side and make it a pain to hold. Also, the tray unlock key is sitting in this port as a cover, and stupidly it has nowhere to go but your pocket when you want to use the port, so chances are you're going to lose it down the track. The other side of the P6 is overly busy and detracts somewhat from the beautiful design. At the base is the SIM card tray, followed by the micro SD card tray, then the volume rocker, and at the top the unlock button. The position of these inputs is usable and they have great distinction from the body. The top edge has another microphone situated next to the micro USB charging port. The rear panel is pretty nice. The 8 megapixel rear facing camera and LED flash are pushed off to the top left and the panel itself features a brushed aluminium look, colour matched to the choice of black, white or pink. Squished all the way at the base is the loudspeaker, which I thought would be obstructed but with how I hold my devices, it's been fine. One thing about this device, the same as an iPhone, is I had no faith whatsoever in it to withstand a tumble. Fortunately, Huawei offered up a rubber bumper in the box. I thought this was a nice inclusion and I used it on a day-to-day -day and definitely masked the beauty of such a thin device, but it served a much higher purpose, I found. This thing gets bloody hot on continued use, not just gaming, but browsing, texting, anything. But where else can he go when a device is this thin? into a supplied rubber bumper. Ah, it all makes sense now. The Ascend P6 retails for around $500 unlocked and outright from MobyCity.com. With this, I wouldn't naturally anticipate a high-end spec sheet given that the phone design is so premium. On the other hand, Huawei believes in value for money. So what you get is Huawei's own K3 V2 chipset featuring a quad-core 1.5 GHz CPU based on a Cortex A9 design, 2 gigs of RAM and a Vivanti GC4000 16-core GPU. I was pretty excited by all this, it sounds amazing. When I ran benchmarks the first time, I got an unfortunately slow performance and shocking one at that, sitting down in the 8000 category on N22. Ran it a few more times and consistently got between 13 and 14,000. This kind of sums up the internals across the board here. It is an inconsistent and laid back performer. The chipset is not optimized to the same level Qualcomm's chips are, and while the OS moved buttery, low times and multitasking felt staggered at times, but at other times was fairly fluid. It was really a mixed performance and not comparable to the Galaxy S4, HTC One, or Xperia Z. Gaming was excellent though, I had no dramas there. LTE has also been dropped from this model, but quality of reception for calls was generally good, but this too was inconsistent. I would often have good HSDPA bars and even Wi-Fi signal, and the phone would not load a single thing requiring the internet. Restart the phone, and we're back on. Internal storage is also very low at 8 gigs on board, with only 4.7 gigs available for the user out of the box. Yes, there is a micro SD card slot up to 32 gigs, and luckily you can move apps and games across to it. There is also the option of mounting an external storage via the micro USB 2.0 port. Also included is a Class 10 GPRS and Bluetooth 3.0 and a 2000 mAh non-removable lithium ion battery. It did okay, heavy use wipes it, but standby time was pretty good. It isn't an all day performer with how I would use my smartphone, but I could make it through the bulk of the day without needing to worry.
A 312 PPI pixel density, the 4.7 inch IPS plus LCD panel used on the P6 is very appreciable. Colors were vivid and natural. It was crisp with no signs of visible pixels and touch was accurate and very sensitive, but can be toned down in the settings. Use it in daylight and I found it was actually fairly reasonable and you can amend the color temperature of the display to taste. So besides being similar in design to the iPhone 4, the Custom Emotion UI 1.6 atop the Android 4.2.2 OS is aiming to make iOS veterans more comfortable with a switchover. It removes the app drawer, which is a big step, leaving only the home pages to edit and fill with your favorite apps and widgets. Making folders becomes your best friend in this regard, as I don't really care for not being able to hide away the apps I rarely use. This will be a point that people either love or hate, but you do become used to it. But customization is still very thick, don't worry about that. You can select from several themes that changes up lock screen styles, color palette and app design. Mind you, all the apps have been layered to match the same square design with rounded edges. This does not work and it really looks cheap. There are also a bunch of transition animations to choose from and amend the workings of most parts of the OS. The notifications menu has all the quick settings scrollable from the top and not in a list brought down with the two finger gesture. The settings menu is fairly stock, minus some tweaks, but then a pointless additional tab offers general settings that is your layman's quick settings to superficial adjustments. The on-screen navigation works well with the P6 and multitasking menu operates as expected and displays RAM usage. One weird, very annoying nuance of the OS, when I would restart the P6, specific apps would disappear from my homepage. I could check settings and find them installed, but without an app drawer, they had nowhere to be found. I would uninstall and reinstall them and they would return. Of the included applications, Huawei amended many of the common ones to look fairly plain and stock and function as such. You do get a free copy of Riptide GP and all of Google's usuals ready and waiting. Load up that micro SD because videos come across beautifully on the P6's display. Audio as well comes through really nice on the loudspeaker, probably a lot better than I expected. The one concerning point is the quality of the Dolby Digital Plus enhancement. This is much better and an upgraded sound enhancement than previous handsets, but music playback through the headphones still feels very flat and hollow. Loudness seems capped more so than on others, and it doesn't get as loud and rich a sound as I craved. On the camera front, the P6 boasts an 8 megapixel rear facing camera and a world's first 5 megapixel front facing. The 5 megapixel on the front is a really nice inclusion and one that makes up for a fairly average performing 8 megapixel. Though I won't complain greatly about the 8 megapixel camera as it manages everything a flagship camera should, daylight images were true if not slightly lacking vibrancy, close ups were sharp and with clean bokeh, but night shots were very hit and miss. Extremely low light situations brought with it far more grain and very oddly balanced colours at times and the depth of the software itself falls short somewhat from its competitors, but it does rock a smart shot function to give you the best balanced image based on several contributing factors, but you can still adjust everything easily about your shot. Beauty Shot will airbrush the hell out of even the smoothest of skin and Panorama works easily, but stitches sloppily giving disjointed shots regularly. The effects tab allows you to shoot with a host of presets, which is kind of fun, and you can select by tapping a moving object to track and keep in focus, which is very handy. As an overall package, the P6 lived up to certain expectations based on my thoughts following the product's launch. It is a sexy, thin device crafted with high-end materials, far exceeding the sub $500 price tag. The custom UI stands at well a part of the competition, and for better or worse, I do actually prefer it over previous Emotion UI versions. Huawei has stepped up its game and tried really hard to target a market outside of its general budget game and gives plenty of inclusions that were unexpected. But the device is missing so many key points to justify its success in a market well dominated by prominent household names. The design is elegant and the thinnest available, but it is borrowed. The careless placement of the headphone jack and has no protection from the heat generated within. The quad-core processor does not perform as it should. The 2013 Nexus 7, with the same clock speed CPU and RAM, smashes out a consistent performance that was completely lacking with Huawei's chipset. And no LTE from a company known for LTE technology? Plainly crazy. For cost, the Nexus 4 is far better option, in my opinion. Even go down to the HTC One X or Galaxy S3 and I would find performances not far dissimilar to this one. So if you're still keen, 
follow the link in the description to pick one up from mobycity.com or check out the rest of the amazing range and get $15 off your purchase by clicking the supplied link. I'm Kurt and this is Kabootech. Thanks for watching.